Tori, you We're can't on. say that when we go live. We're going to get banned. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. There's a lot of questions about President Biden and his ability to serve in a second term. Um, you see him up close, face to face. What say you? Is he up for a, is he up for a second term? <laughs> that was an old one. That was the Hi. wrong one. I'm very it's, sorry, everyone. That was the wrong video. Ninety-two. I uploaded the wrong one, everyone. I'm very sorry. Should we do a retake? Sure, Finn. Why not? Yeah. Give people time to roll in. What's happening over on the Rumblers? Mm. The land of the no chatters. <laughs> Hello, good, Rumble good folk. Good to have you with us. I wonder if there is anyone in Rumble. The Rumble's usually good. They just never fucking. Come Rumble's in. usually more than YouTube. They just don't interact. Mm. Ever. Yeah. No, For not sure. once. What are we, 96? Mm hmm. You're too young for this, but there used to be a show called Number 96 in the 70s that my mum mm. watched. It was like an Australian soapy. And in one episode, a tractor rolled over and squashed the guy that was driving it and his wife bolted down the hill to the tractor and back in the day, bras weren't very supportive and her babingas just went ba-doing, 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 running down to the... And I, I don't know how old I was when I watched that episode with my mum, but... It scarred me for life. <laughs> As it probably should. Thinking, you're only a child. You're not meant to be saying that. Seeing herself with her gigantic bazookas. <laughs> Number 96. Here we are, 96, mm. only four of 100 episodes. We deserve mm. a medal. We are close. We are very close now. We deserve a 100. I'm just minutes. uploading the intro, guys. Oh. Bear with me. Sorry. We're fluffing. <laughs> We're just killing time till this yeah. happens. I don't end. even have a little um, reserve mm. Christian song to chuck on while we wait for this. Oh, the live viewers, if you ho hover over it in the uh, stream yard tour, I just found this out. It tells you how many is on what platform. Watch it. That's pretty really? good tonight. Yeah. It must be just you. I don't get that. That's, oh. a, that's a bus driver special. Yeah, right. Well, definitely more on YouTube at the moment. But uh, here we go. Ruth Walton, um, by the way, it was Ruth's birthday Good this day, week. Ruth. Oh, happy, happy birthday, Ruth. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ruth. Happy birthday to you. Woo -woo. You just have to imagine okay. I was singing as well, Ruth. I saw you pretending. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Senator Rennick. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Chair. In January 2017, the day before Donald Trump was inaugurated, Andrew Anthony Fauci made the following statement in a speech at Georgetown University. If there is a message I want to leave with you today, based on my experience, is that there is no question that there will be a challenge for the upcoming administration in the area of infectious diseases, both chronic infectious diseases in the sense of already ongoing disease, but there will be a surprise outbreak. Now, that would have to be one of the most incredible statements of this century, that a scientist could predict a surprise outbreak in the term of an elected president. Now, I don't know about you, but I didn't know that viruses were political. But yet here we have a scientist, a head of the Infectious Disease Department in the United States, predicting three years in advance of COVID, that there would be a surprise 
outbreak, infectious disease outbreak. Now, when you Google this, Reuters will come up with a fact check and they'll say, oh, yes, it's all true he said that, but he didn't say it was coronavirus. He didn't say it was COVID. Well, it doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is there needs to be serious questions asked about what Anthony Fauci knew about the origins of coronavirus. What do you think about that one, Corey? So that guy will end up killing himself before he has to testify next week. I was just writing <laughs> in chat that now we're going to be taken off the algorithm completely because he played that. <laughs> Did I know? That is very true. You many times have also spoken about the, the little mm. screenshot of the email I got from YouTube last year where I was scathing about mm. conspiracy theories and... <laughs> Got a warning for spreading misinformation? That wasn't us. That was a senator in Australia. So it doesn't matter. Sure, You've just played something that contained the banned word. Mm. Anywho, great way. And to we do know it. freedom of speech is banned. We We're so good at reason. getting in that bloody algorithm. Told us <laughs> we can never get out of. So uh, I hope we I'll never get in. Graveyard of former <laughs> YouTube channels behind me, still sitting there, just. Invisible to the YouTube world, but awesome. Mm. All right, well, let's keep up. What do you reckon? It looks like yeah, it's let's a get into it. Thursday episode for Ruth. Um, yeah, well, welcome. I think you're going first this week, aren't you? I am going first this week. So Oof. the whole space exploration thing, I've always felt money should be spent sorting out the mess we've made down on Earth, you know, and we've talked about all the space junk out Don't get me wrong, I'm fascinated by it all, but, like, even that story with how much space junk is out there, and speaking mm. of space junk, this story is pretty indicative of how fucked up human beings are. All right, let's see. It. Even the untouched and pure planet. Um, some dipshit has come up with the genius idea Mm. of seeing advertising, like branding logos on the moon. So while we're all down here on planet Earth just doing our thing and the sun goes down, we can look up and see a Nike emblem on the moon or some mm. other thing. I think that was in a movie with Will Smith. Well, it's now um, a possibility in only two years. Yeah, so, right. yes. Astro Lab is offering to fly brands to the moon um, and give them the chance to advertise and test their product on the lunar landscape. Um, yeah, they've right. signed up with Musk, Elon Musk, for transportation duties. Um, and, yeah, essentially they're going to use the surface of the moon, I guess, as some gigantic billboard. That's fantastic. Or, um, and look at the thing, 2026. That's when Jeez. the Flex Rover is uh, heading up there. Um, it's, mm. It isn't just a trip to the moon. It's a leap forward for science, culture and civilization itself. Yeah, uh, we need a McDonald's up there. That's a good idea, Ruth. What's McDonald's that? Ad, a big M, a big M on the moon. That could be well, That's what I'm expecting the first Golden one. Golden arches. Mm. Um, a group of humans, which is what they're calling themselves, are promising not to trash the moon. Um, and that the brands must sign, sign some contract, a lunar charter, promising to respect the universe's natural resources and contribute to the education and inspiration of all. Yeah, because we do that this, on Earth quite a bit. This is appalling. How do you feel about this, Roy? How do you feel about it, audience that doesn't chat over <laughs> on Rumble? There's a couple of them watching. Um it's we got it's four. We got four like, watching on Rumble. Up. Yeah, like, I feel like the Golden Arches are going to be the first thing up there. That's. I reckon it will be I'm because it's surprised. probably the most, sadly, the most mm. recognised symbol globally because they've managed to wedge their way into nearly every mm. country on the planet now. I think um, it's Coke. I think Coke is number one. Yeah, I think Coca-Cola still will be, but I reckon the Golden Arches will be way easier to just plaster on the moon. But, I mean, it's always like getting a little bit Truman Show, isn't it, you know, just that sort of how they're all... <laughs> I mean, it's been the Truman Show for a while. 
<laughs> I love the Truman Show. But um, mm. in fact, going to Singapore last January was like being on the set of the Truman Show. It's too good to be true. You wander around and you're just constantly expecting a camera to yeah. fall out of the sky and land on the ground in front of you. It's crazy. Yeah, everything's so clean. It doesn't look real. It looks like a video game or something. Yeah, That's even fun. the sort of areas like where there's rubbish bins and things like that are just immaculate. Yeah. Like there's yeah. just nowhere that looks, even like there's an outdoor smoking area at the airport and it's a butterfly garden. Mm. All these smokers are sitting there with all these butterflies fluttering it around. It does get, the cops do get pretty violent though, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 there's yeah. pretty intense stuff that goes on there for sure. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I'm not a fan of this. I think we really need to focus our energy and our money on fixing up the planet we've already well and truly mm. stuffed up. Can we yeah. leave the money alone? Can we just <laughs> leave it alone? That to me is just uh, the ultimate disgusting capitalism gone so wrong. Oh, let's mm. be running out of billboards. Let's just whack some logos up on the moon, shall we? <laughs> Everyone doesn't get enough ads already. We need a permanent ad that never goes away. I know. It's like there's nowhere <laughs> to escape it. And the fact that they're calling yeah. themselves a group of humans too. Mm, like that's a bit strange. A group of dodgy, greedy humans is what they should be called. So, yeah, moon advertising, mm. everyone, in two years from now, when Brilliant. you look at the moon, you won't see the, you know, they would talk about the man in the moon, and I can see the man mm. in the moon, but I always see a snail. A snail? Yeah. Yeah, right. I don't see that. Just I see the man with a big beard. Day, I'm going to get the moon, a photo of the moon, and I'm going to do mm. the outline so you can see with the snail. <laughs> The moon is a very interesting thing. People should research the moon more if they haven't already. It's got some interesting traits to it. The moon's amazing, which is why mm. it should be left alone. Humans don't touch yeah. it. Just fuck off. We've got our favourite person back this week, Tori. Okay. Pierre, the old Pierre lady's back. Oh, not Kareen. again. Kareen. <laughs> so she's gone on a radio show and um, the radio host has uh, asked her some pretty basic questions and uh, -uh. uh she she didn't like how basic the questions were and thought they were quite insulting so after two questions she hangs up <laughs> and ends the call <laughs> so, oh dear so let's have a listen to this uh little radio chat it goes pretty well When I told a number of people that I was talking to you today, it was interesting, though. They all said, would you please just ask her, does the president have dementia? And so before I move on from that, does he? That, Mark, Mark, I can't even believe you're asking me this question. That is a credibly offensive question to ask. But you know, yeah, people is, ask it. Wait, no, let me. No, 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 no. You, Mark, you, 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 you took, you're taking us down this rabbit hole. Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me. Do you think she actually believes people don't ask it or do you think she knows that everyone thinks it? She probably gets asked it all the time. <laughs> probably, yeah, probably a daily occurrence, yeah. Let's be very clear about this. Uh, for the past several years, the president's physician has laid out very in a comprehensive way uh, the president's health. Uh, this is a president, if you watch him every day, if you really pay attention to his record and what he has done, you will see exactly how focus he's been on the American people, how historic <laughs> his actions have been. And so I'm not even going to truly, truly. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, have you been saying that, Tori? I, I haven't seen any of that. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I've seen the opposite of what you just described. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. You know, take, take the premise of your question. I think it is uh, incredibly insulting. And uh, and so we can, you know, we can move on to the next question. Gas prices and grocery prices then. <laughs> Big topics here in North Carolina. How does uh, Mr. Biden win votes when people don't have as much disposable income? Look, the president understands. Uh, he grew up in, in a middle class family, a working class family in Scranton, Pennsylvania. He gets it. He understands how difficult it is for Americans who are sitting around their kitchen table every month trying to figure out what they're going to pay for. You have to remember when the president walked into this administration, there were multiple crises happening. There was COVID. There was uh, the economy was in a tailspin because of the last administration. So 
under the previous administration, their economy was doing the best it had been doing in like 10 years. So I don't know what the fuck she means by that. But all Well, right. let's not forget that <laughs> Biden was about 40 during the Great Depression. Yeah. <laughs> because of what the, the President Trump left us with. Now you're asking me about gas prices. The president took action on gas prices. Let's not forget Russia's invasion on Ukraine skyrocketed prices of gas. And because the president took action, we see we are in a different place than we were a year ago in gas prices. And I can't remember this, but was Biden in any way involved in that? Because I feel like uh, he may have been involved in the, the pipelines. <laughs> and uh, maybe egging on the war a little bit as well. I think he might have been behind that. So <laughs> it, I'm just waiting for her to in the interview. I can't wait to hear her rage oh. quit. Yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up. Uh, eggs, milk, uh, seafood products, uh, all the important uh, groceries, those costs have gone down because of what this president that has is been not able true. to do. And, th and with that, thank you so much, Mark. Have an amazing, amazing day. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. She hung up. <laughs> she hung up. <laughs> I mean, Mark. Mark, I, this, this, you listen. I am nominating you to get a press corps badge, and you <laughs> need to go to the White House. I'm sorry, but you asked three, four incredibly salient, important questions that are all front of mind. Nothing out of bounds. No baba booing or anything like that, right? And you did it exactly right on. And I don't understand. I don't understand the the fragility of this person. <laughs> the fragility. <laughs> The fragility. Oh, uh, I, hats off I, to Mark. I, I totally understand the fragility because mm. how how else would you feel after working with him for that long? Like it's remarkable she's still even there. Well, they fought, the first one quit, didn't she? She could she could have yeah, but she's like Kareen has been around for a while mm. now. Yeah, that yeah, normally lasts as long as her. So yeah, yeah, I think it might be. I mean. It is an ultimate thing to put on your CV, though. Like, it's there's nothing above it in terms of CV. If you want to be a public speaker and you've defended someone who's mentally, uh, the word we can't say on here, and you put, you've been defending that person and somehow succeeding at keeping your job, that is excellent to put on your CV. I mean, where can't you work after that, after defending this guy? There's nothing. There's nothing. We could just put <laughs> Her work together in her little video resume because mm. uh, every time she's featured on our show, she hasn't been that impressive. <laughs> but she's kept her job. Enough. But she's kept the job somehow. <laughs> after this gig somehow. All right, this story is not so has, much. Has the question, though, before we move on, the question, <laughs> is it that she... Is it that there's no one to replace her? Is that why she's keeping the job yes. and they haven't fired yes. her? Okay, no yes. one else wants to do it. Just keep she's getting the pay rises. <laughs> you can't leave. We need you. We need well, you. We actually have to need to work guy. again after this gig. She'll make so much money because they just keep mm. giving her pay rises because there's no one yeah. else who will step into her shoes. So <laughs> to keep her, they've just got to keep throwing cash at her. Yeah. Um, she probably wouldn't have to work again after this, but I don't think she'd be employable again after this either. Now, my yeah, next story yeah. is not so much bad shit, more amusing, amusing. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to so, pop it up? Yeah, I'm just finding it. Uh, oh. Here we go. I'm going mm. to California um, where everyone's favourite company from making products when we were kids has oh, yes. asked politely if the California police could stop using Lego heads to disguise suspects in photos. So we'll just go straight down to <laughs> the lineup shot. Mm. I think this is genius. Like it's the first time I've seen it. I wish to God it had been a thing when I was practising and doing criminal law. <laughs> it would have just made my day, when they, especially when they had to show it in court, the, the line-up photo. Come on, that looks great, but um, look, Lego is not. But line. why? What's the point? Don't you because want to see the, that in the line-up there's innocent people. They, they use, you know, a combination of people and the suspect is 
amongst them and then hope that the witnesses can pick them in the lineup. So they have mm. to cover their faces. They can't show these photos with innocent people standing there, number six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that's why they have to, but, you know, in the past they would have just blurred them or put a blob or something, but at some point the California cops have gone, let's use Lego heads. Mm. And Lego why, did they, said, why did they put the Lego on the real person? I assume the real person's in there. Serenity B. <laughs> well, it is, welcome. It is brilliant and a creative use of Lego heads, but Lego has said, can you not? Can mm. you not? Um, Please stop. They, they've basically told them to stop doing it and they'll need to come up with a new way to disguise the faces of suspects in photos that get put on social media and out in the public. Um, and Lego has said, hey, it's our stuff, it's our intellectual property, mm. find something else. So um, they've you know been what it'd be good? What? President says. That would be a good one. They may well have. <laughs> um, I mean, in the past they've used emoji faces. They've used characters from the Grinch, Shrek and Barbie. Um, and that's what they've sort of been doing over the last few years. But then um, the... This law came in um, in California prohibiting the cops from sharing photos of suspects in nonviolent crimes. And um, I guess they also just yeah, right decided right. to put the Lego heads on. That's just what they chose to do. But Lego found out and said, no, 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 no. Respectfully <laughs> asked them to refrain, refrain from using their intellectual property. So they're going to try and find another, another way to do it. But seriously, I, mean, I just love it. Tell me it's not oh. cool. And it's not that uh, It just was too funny not to share because that's making me laugh a lot. But then I've looked at photos of lineups a lot in my job. So for mm. me, this is just such a refreshing and entertaining thing, whereas for you, you seem confused or not amused or something. I don't. Does it say it's for lineups or does it say it's for non, um, non-violent criminals? Because I'm assuming uh, that's not a real photo. Um, it might be a, a proper lineup photo. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Scroll, scroll down. See what it says underneath it, please. Oh, the caption. Hang on, I've got to get back yeah. over the article. The caption. Oh, it just says oh, view more on Instagram. But it's got their yeah. It's got their yeah. police logo. Yeah. So but if you if you scroll down to what it said, I think it said the law in California said something about non-violent. Correct. Criminals or something. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, and mm -hmm. this year, California adopted a statewide law prohibiting police from sharing photos of suspects in non-violent crimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Because they, otherwise, why, why I they change that? Probably because people that were in lineups um, for non-violent crimes and their faces weren't coming up were probably getting abused. I don't know. I, I mean, don't I think it says lineups there. It just says. Well, anything but they suspects. use stuff like that on social media, obviously. I mean, this is the thing that's weird about America because even their trials are televised. Um, yeah. A case I followed, if, well, still kind of not followed but because it's it's done and dusted, but they released like nearly 2,000 pages of discovery. So everyone got to read the entire, well, not the entire, they redacted a lot of stuff, but you got to read the court file. All the witness statements and photos where the murder victims were found and, like, yeah, insane right. amount of information. And if, But even just trials being mm. televised is such a random thing. I mean, it would be very rare that you'd see a photo of a police lineup in Australian media or social media. Like, it's not something mm. that's put out there, um, you know, and with our privacy laws especially. But, yeah. So they, they televised <laughs> the Nuremberg, didn't they? Pardon? They televised the Nuremberg back in the, the 40s, didn't they? They televised everything. It's insane. Mm. It's insane. And then, I mean, that's why the majority of cases that are covered extensively and, and like, overdone extensively mm. by heaps and heaps of channels, it's always an American trial. I mean, my, um, my true crime stuff, the biggest audiences I've got ever mm. on that channel was when I covered the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. Well they're going they're going through the um who's the guy that, that shot someone on set? Yeah the, um the Alex Alec Alec Alec, Baldwin. Yeah. 
They're going through that one now. I saw some clips of that. Mm -hmm. The Armory chick is 100% guilty, by the way. I'll put that out here. And I'm not saying allegedly. She 100% did it, just like that mushroom lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's back in court next month, actually. I'll have to crank up my true crime. The mushroom again. lady? Yes. I thought she was guilty and put away. No, she's been charged with murder. Hasn't even gone to trial yet. But her next court oh. appearance is in April. She's out walking the streets. No, no, no. She's in jail. Oh, okay, okay. But Good. she's been in jail since like November. So yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I just, I just feel so bad. <laughs> yeah, righto, righto, woman. <laughs> no, it was it three so counts of murder and three counts of yeah, three counts of attempted murder. Yeah, yeah, was, holy. The one that survived the lunch and then two attempts at killing her ex-husband. Mm. Mm. That's uh, that's proper nuts. So I don't know yes. if you've uh, you've seen this one, Tori, but uh, in Baltimore they have a bridge. And, oh, um, gosh. I have seen this one. And do you know what's really weird about it, Finn, is do you know that in mm. 1974 in mm. Hobart an oil tanker, the Lake Burley Griffin, oh, sorry, the Lake mm. Illawarra, hit the Tasman Bridge and it collapsed and 12 people died. So the crew of the oh. ship, which sank, but also mm. people that drove off the bridge. Oh, no one actually drove off this bridge because they'd managed to, the ship had managed to get a mayday out before they collided with the bridge, so they managed to stop traffic. But there were still people Oh, these guys the, said there was 20, 20 people missing. The six the people missing was what I understood from the most oh. recent I checked the story about it two hours ago. Yeah, right. Well, anyway, mm. let's let's watch the footage. It looks like the ship loses power. Its columns was hit by a cargo course. ship. The Baltimore City Fire Department says it is unsure how many vehicles were on the bridge when this happened, but there was a tractor trailer on it. Take a look. Water. Um, we've been learning, speaking with some of the officials there, uh, is that as of now they're searching for about 20 people potentially. This is according to the Baltimore City Fire Chief uh, in some interviews from earlier this morning. Again, this happened around 1.30 or so uh, a.m. Darkness is making this search that's look in out, there. Look how it collapses, though. This is hectic. It hit one, hits one spot and then the whole thing gives way. Yeah, so it loses power somehow. Who knows? Far out. Oh, there we go. Power back on. Loses power again. Brutal. Oh. Oh. The whole thing. It's so weird how the whole thing goes. Every part of it, Tori. Every part of it just collapses. Yeah, there you go. I've been muted the whole time, sorry. Um, I've sailed under that bridge was one thing I said, but also um, it's a huge mm. container ship. Like it's heavy. But oh, the other yeah. thing is it's so many people are going, oh, it looks like it hit it deliberately. It's like they couldn't stop it. You can't stop no. a ship of that size in that mm. short space of time. But apparently the power went out twice. Twice, and yeah. they did mayday, and the last update I got was that there's six people missing, and they were in that vehicle that was mentioned in that little piece you just played, mm. and they were all construction workers that were on the bridge trying to get everyone. Oh right, right oh, for it. Yeah. Um, I've had river river pilots in charge. He hit the main loading tower. I'm just going to show oh. you a photo of the Tasman Bridge. So this is in Hobart. It was actually 1975. It was January. It was right up the Cyclone Tracy, which happened in Darwin in 74. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember waking up to the newspaper to this, well, not this particular photo, but do you want to see that? Oh, yeah, I had some friends tell me about that. Actually, that's coming back to me now. Yeah, and if I can scroll yeah, in, I can actually mm -hmm. check out the cars. Hanging off. Hanging off the edge. Yeah. There. Fuck that. But Fuck that. <laughs> 12 people died, six Jesus. crew of the ship because the ship sank, mm. um, and six people in cars that went off the edge. That's fucked. So it's interesting it's because... It's so high too. That's such a high fall. 
Yeah, yeah, it would be absolutely terrible. I mean, it happened, it, it was dark when it happened, just to add to the absolute terror and fear um, mm. that people that must have felt. Um, but it was interesting today because I was just having a conversation with a couple of people and they were saying how what's just happened in Baltimore, like, will be triggering to people back on that bridge collapse too because my mm. co-host when I did radio, he used to drive over at that time to get into the station early to do radio and mm. he had a fight with him. Well, not a fight, but he and his wife had a bit of a chat and he ended up leaving late for work but he would have normally been on the bridge and he's to this day wow. cannot drive over it and even when i drove us over it he would be absolutely frozen i thought you're head. gonna say he now argues with his wife every day <laughs> there's a story one of the <laughs> well, maybe several but one of the 9 11 survivor stories was he and his wife had a massive fight and he was he missed his train mm. so maybe you know there's something in mm. that yeah. But yeah, awful Fight stuff. with your so, wife is the moral of the story, everyone, in case you're not paying attention. Always argue. Well, Baltimore is actually a beautiful city too. Like it's a horrible thing to have happened. And mm. but from what I could tell, and I think I mean Ruth's definitely following the story as well. The ship did everything they possibly could and they were Yeah, I mean of, they lost power twice, so there's not much. And there's traffic the visibly going over as the boats mm. heading as the ship's heading towards the bridge. There's a lot of traffic. So they did a great job getting all the cars off that nobody actually was on the bridge apart from this one vehicle which had the six workers in it that were trying to stop all the traffic. Yeah, right. Very sad. That's hectic, yeah. It's but, just yeah, the way it collapses. Yeah, the whole thing. Just you like, um, yeah, I mean, the um, the main loading tower. I'm still here. Oh, Hi. Still here. I just my camera keeps cutting out. And I don't know what's going on. Um, what was my last one? Oh, the Lego heads because I haven't even written that yes. one. Um, yeah. So I have to do go out to Baltimore though because it does affect you. And like to wake up and see a city. I mean, a bit like nine eleven. So many people were traumatized just by losing that familiar landscape as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's just weird that a similar thing happened here and was one of those events because we were still recovering from all the visuals that we got to see with Cyclone Tracy and then our bridge collapsed. Not all yeah. of it, though. Testament to the builders of the Tasman Bridge. Hmm. Hmm. Um, wow. Well, should I bring up my next story and you can do it from the side? <laughs> um. Yeah, that should be all right. I just don't know what's going on right now. My camera just cut out for some reason. Do you think you'll be back? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. I'm just resetting it now, so it should be all right. All right. So you can't get through life without one bad breakup. But when you live with somebody <laughs> and you break mm. up, um, you know, and you've got to split all your belongings, especially the stuff that you combine, like you bought together, the joint purchases. Finn, yeah. <laughs> Finn is in time. His, his camera has... Sent him off stage. Um, but this is a story uh, that's just come out this week, which I reckon probably is the pettiest one. Now, I wasn't in a relationship when this happened, but I had a housemate and she mm. moved out and it was right when I had my final law year, law school exams, and I had just hung out a load mm. of washing the day before. And it wasn't quite dry yet. But because my housemate had bought the pegs, she, and we, we, were, we were really good buddies. Like there wasn't a, you know, how some flatmates end up hating each other and someone's got to go. She was just ready yeah. to move to her own place. And, um, but because they were her pegs, rather than just let my washing dry and me take the pegs around to her house the next day, she just put this gigantic pile of my wet washing on the kitchen table and took all of her pegs. And I thought oh, that was good. petty. <laughs> yeah, she took the pegs. Um, to this yeah. day, though, she still feels guilty because every time I go and visit her, I always I have like a peg. I always take a peg and stick it on my clothing or something as a little dig. Um, <laughs> but this guy, I reckon, takes the prize for the most pettiest. So... 
Mm. Have a look at it. I'm going to scroll up and you're going to see what he took from the bathroom when he moved out. The toilet. Very nice. That's a good move. The toilet. He should have just now, taken the seat. I can't stand looking at the toilet, <laughs> I've got to say, and that drain's even grosser. Um, it looks like he also either used all the toilet paper or just took it all off the roll as a final F you. Over there. <laughs> it's not like she's been able to use the loo or anything. So, yeah. Mm. Um, but anyway, um, he's basically, yeah, nicked off with the toilet and everyone on the internet kind of thinks he's the um, most petty ex-boyfriend around. Like she's had to go to the local Taco Bell to be able to go to the loo. <laughs> that but is pretty he funny, though. He's a plumber. So it was easy for mm. him to nab it. Um, mm. But the reason she broke up with him in the first place is because he doesn't pay his way and he refuses to tip service staff. This is some <laughs> random photo of a toilet because we haven't seen enough photos of toilets yet. Um, mm. She went to the bedroom after they broke up so she could have a bit of a chill while he packed yeah. up his stuff and left, but she accidentally fell asleep and when she woke up, the loo had gone. <laughs> she did That's say she, she has been laughing about it too because every breakup mm. just gets more and more interesting. But mm. I think I mean that's obviously petty, interesting. What a petty Betty. There it is. <laughs> the hole where the oh. loo once sat. <laughs> so Sorry about that. Ron, I'm back now. I uh I don't know what the hell's going on. I think my computer's acting up. He might be able to trade the loo in for a new girlfriend. (laughs) (laughs) Serenity Uh, B would just sit on the hole. No, you wouldn't. What I what I would would have done if I was that petty, I would have just taken the toilet seat. That would have been funny. (laughs) Yeah, but they're easy to replace. (laughs) Yes, if you know what you're doing. Not if you're just an average lady. Feel like suspend ourselves and squat over a loo, like. (laughs) <laughs> but then that's funny then then knowing that they're doing that that's the that's only way it would be about. funny because it's so gross when it happens <laughs> is when a guy leaves your toilet seat up and you get up in the middle of the night to go to the loo and you don't turn the light on and you sit down and you get the cold ceramic on your bum and thighs oh i hate that or worse when the missus leaves it down and you go go up in the middle of the night and then you piss all over the toilet seat and then you have to clean it. Well, you piss all over the toilet seat even when the light's on. So, you know, <laughs> and now with a hole this big, guys are so bad yeah. at getting it in there. <laughs> I've seen some kinky porn and guys don't seem to have a problem hitting targets in that kind of porn, but for some reason. Thank you very much for sharing that, Tori. <laughs> we all wanted oh. to know that. In a toilet, and guys just have to mm. piss everywhere, but in it. Mm. <laughs> All right, so we're moving over to the research. American Senate research. this time. Oh, good. At good save. All. Good save. Good save. So, uh, our favorite senator is back again in America. This guy who completely keeps owning everyone. Oh, the left. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the I can't remember which side, but one of the senators decided to bring in a witness uh to talk negatively about carbon or something along those lines and the kid the on the left that, which is fair en- which is fair enough right however they've decided to pick someone who has zero clue about anything to do with anything and so this senator just asked him some very very let's let's call them biden-esque questions right. and this guy this guy cannot answer any of them. It's quite because funny. Let's like have a watch. A one year old in boxing gloves. I'm going to pretend that you <laughs> know who that guy is. The Democrats or the Republicans? I'm here on behalf of the outdoor enthusiasts. You were contacted by Senator Whitehouse's staff. I personally uh, came with Protect Our Winters, so I don't okay. know how that went. Okay. What is what is carbon dioxide? <laughs> I'm. I went to high school, but that's uh, carbon dioxide is a. A gas. Okay. I'm not a, I'm not a professional to talk about 
carbon dioxide. You want us to abolish it, right? No, I, <laughs> there's always going to be carbon dioxide. Right. So, so what is it you want us to do? I uh, let, me, let me back up. I mean, you're here as an expert. Tell me more about what carbon dioxide is. I'm here as an expert cross-country skier who sees the changes in my winters and the landscape that I live in in Alaska. And so carbon dioxide is what I see it as is, you know, it's a gas that exists in our atmosphere. And what? Is it the major part of our atmosphere? It's a huge part of our atmosphere, yeah. It's actually a very small part of our atmosphere. <laughs> We'll pause it there so we don't get copyrighted. It gets better than Tori. So as you can tell, this guy's a complete moron <laughs> and has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. And so this senator just keeps destroying him. Absolute gold. Well, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. What are you asking specifically? Uh, well, you said we need to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. I'd like to know first if you know what it is. You want us to abolish fossil fuels? You said that. You never have said that? No. What do you think we ought to do with fossil fuels? What will we do with fossil fuels? Yeah. Do we make any changes? I would like to see a decrease in the use of fossil fuels. I think there's a possibility to use more electric generation. Over what period of time? 10 years, 50 years, 100 years? I would like to see it come as fast as possible while continuing. How fast? I'm not, I don't have a You don't know? That. No. Uh, how, how much will it cost for us to become carbon neutral in the United States by 2050? I'm not a professional on that. I don't have an idea. You don't have any idea? You just think we ought to spend the money? I'm not an economist. Yeah. But it's going to cost money. You realize that. Yeah, but we've also talked about the trade-off of what the cost of climate change as emergencies will cost in the future also. so Right. But it's going to cost trillions of dollars to become carbon neutral by 20,050, right? I do not know. <laughs> it, keeps, it keeps destroying him. I don't know whose idea it was to bring this guy on as an expert, but <laughs> they need to be fired. <laughs> they immediately need to be fired. Oh, my God. So, yeah, let's keep watching. It's only got a minute left. You don't know. You just think we ought to do it. I I don't have a great answer for you, but I think okay. I would. If, like we spent, if we spent those trillions of dollars and became carbon neutral by 2050 in the United States, which you advocate, how much will it reduce world temperature? I don't have an answer for that. You don't know? No. You just think we ought to spend the money and then see what happens? I think as an athlete, I think if we spend that money and invest in our future, hopefully those temperatures stop rising and maybe the snow at least stabilizes where it is for me. Yeah. I don't think anyone knows for sure. I don't know anyway. My colleagues invite witnesses to come to us, advise us on passing legislation. I'll always uh, check out the background. We should uh, we should probably leave it there because he just he get he gets worse and worse. He just keeps destroying this poor kid who's got no idea what he's doing. I kind of feel sorry for him. I don't, but I don't think the kid was bad. I thought the dude was an idiot, the, the senator. How do you get that? He was asking because, him basic questions about what the guy's there to testify about as an expert. Yeah, but, he's, and, but he said from the start he qualified that he's a skier and he's just seeing what's happening where he skis. Like like he said, whoever dragged him in there as an expert is a person that should be under yeah. scrutiny. yeah. He you know. should not be testifying in any way. You shouldn't be bringing in people to the Senate if they don't know what exactly. The fuck they're talking okay, about. he had the best intentions, but he wasn't putting himself out there yeah. as an expert. But for some reason, that's this. It's kind of giving me flashback, like deja vu of somebody else that was dragged in to testify, and they had absolutely no. Can you think of a story that you've shown before where similar sort of thing? I don't know. Has Biden been to the Senate? <laughs> but, um, All right. So the Senate. I don't remember. Always... It's definitely possible, though. I don't. I don't remember who that was. So, um, let's call that the Senate expert question mark. <laughs> yes. <all around. laughs> I, but I. I don't know. He kind of reminded me a bit of Mark Zuckerberg when he was being questioned. And oh yeah, yeah. We played that bad lip reading one. Um. All right. This is the he, he knew what he was doing though. The senators who were asking the questions had no idea what they were asking. Correct. And he was but like, it was gold. But even the bad lip reading. Can do computer things? Yes. The bad of lip reading can. of that. Um, <laughs> so this is my favourite story for not just this week but for such a long time for all the wrong reasons. We do often um, do a lot of. Uh, oh, yeah, the Depp Heard trial, trial definitely. Uncle Sam from, oh, not Uncle Sam, Sam the Eagle from The Muppet Show. Totally should not have been. They called the wrong dude and he was off his face. Anyway, that's for another yeah, day. Right. Um, this is my favourite story, yeah, not just from this week but for a while. We do have cover 
quite a lot of funeral stories where people have woken up in their coffins and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, usually recent, South America for some reason. In recent years, uh, funerals and even recently for me, you still watch a lot of them online, people zoom in. But a lot of um, funerals these days too, not only are people sort of zooming Mel, in and Mel. watching. <laughs> well, actually, Mel Mel. Oh, kind of my God, the- Tori, can we go one week without one? We are right now. Okay. There ain't no, there ain't no penis, but there is broadcast on a screen in the church to the entire funeral audience. Can you see in the middle? I can't no, you're gonna have zoom, to zoom in, in, I think. Can I zoom in on X? I'm not sure. Let me see. I can. So see how they've got all the big screens? Yeah. Can you see the big smiley face? Yeah. If you look down to the next photo, no, or circle, the photo. Here, it's a yeah. girl whose camera comes on. She puts a funeral on to zoom in, but the camera is on. She's in the bathroom, in the shower, shaving her vagine area. Now, I, she's obviously been quite blurred out in that. And, yeah, unfortunately, I'm having trouble. For some reason, X isn't a fan of the... I think you have to actually save the photo, Tori, and then zoom in on yeah, it. Yeah, and I only just found that right before we went live. But let me um, stop that and I'll actually bring the article up where she's blurred even more. Um, okay. But, yes, she, she's basically... It's gone viral. I mean, why wouldn't it? Mm. Zoom into I don't know who's how she was connected to the funeral person, but here's Probably a bit so. more. If you want to chuck the article up, so yeah, she had no idea her camera was on. Now there's a girl on YouTube that some of the people in chat would remember a, a creator called Makeup Monster, whose camera came on when she was in the shower and everyone got to see her full on Rudy Nudy. But this is worse because this was projected up on a gigantic screen at a funeral. Um, Now, I mean, it's kind of a dumb thing to do, right? Like, oh, I better sit on on Great Aunt Doris's funeral, but no, stop it. I'm just going to zoom in and have a shower. I I don't know if I'd call it dumb. I'd call it more disrespectful than anything else. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's dumb. It's disrespectful. It's a heap of weird things. But, yeah, Mm. she's in the shower. Not only is she in the um, shower, she's also shaving her pubic region. And, um, yeah, there's heaps of different photos. You can see there's one there with her sort of, so her name's Hayley. She was muted at least. (laughs) There's sort of Hayley in the shower, like it's a close-up. And, yeah, it was being broadcast on the, the whole screen, like fully on show. And a lot of people were watching it. So, yeah, she was told at the wake um, face-to-face that everyone had seen her shaving her. They called it her. There was something on um, X in the comments. Shave your kitty cat. If you're thinking, <laughs> having, a bad, if you're thinking having a bad day, at least you ain't logging into Zoom for a funeral, hopping in mm. the shower and shaving your kitty cat in front of everybody. <laughs> So, yeah, how embarrassing, Uh, right? Well, she took a device in there so she could listen Mm. to the the funeral, I guess. (laughs) I would literally die too. No, she was. I think he manimal. No, she wasn't at the funeral. She zoomed in. She went to the wake. Mm. But she, she obviously, well, she went to the wake with a neatly groomed kitty cat. There you go. Why? Why? Oh, Joman. I love how everyone's rocking up at the end. Good on you. Good on you guys. Yeah, just in time for the last (laughs) time. This is my last time, so Finn's got the next Mm. one. But, yeah, so um, that would have to be one of the most embarrassing things. But it also Mm. just goes to show that, um, I mean, there's another, there's this in the church, so there's the church and there's all the people and then the four screens and there she is up there in that middle one. Um, on full display, but it just goes to show how younger people are not 
you know, prepared to just put their phones down and do stuff without the phones with them. Mm. And even if you're going to put it, even if you think, oh, I'm running late, I'm going to get to the wake at least, I've just got to shave my kitty cat before I go. If you're going to put your phone in the bathroom and listen to the funeral, like, why would you have it pointing at you in the shower? Yeah, yeah. Surely you just have it sitting down so you can still hear what's going on. No, no, was already voted for this. Look, I kind of am on there too. Um, <laughs> I mean, seriously, leave your phone alone. I read a gross yeah, article about too, Finn, about how most younger folk take mm. their phone into the bathroom with them, even like to go to the loo. And then they also had a survey parallel to it about how often people clean their phones. And nearly yeah. all of the younger generation said occasionally they wipe the screen on their jeans or, you know, their their leg or on the mm. sleeve or whatever. They don't disinfect <laughs> their phones ever and they're taking them in and out of the loos. Mm. Maybe it'll be, build up their immune system. <laughs> That's so they don't have to get their new vaccine. There's other ways to do that. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, so this the amount one, of was uh, also voting for the naked chick zooming mm. in. But got, you've got a bit of stiff competition here, Finn. What have you oh, got for the last one? Oh. So we got a we got a worker here who um he just wanted to uh, light up some foam, just a little bit of a corner, just to see how quickly it would burn. And um, so he's at work, shirt off, must be hot. But uh, he's got his shirt off. He, he decided... Just light the corner a little bit and we'll just see what happens. So I don't know if you can guess what's going to happen if you light up foam, Tori, but uh, it gets out of control. I don't know if quickly is the right word, but let's just say rapidly. What the hell? Dude, I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or what, but uh, the entire thing goes up in flames like instantly. Out of curiosity. Yeah, that's when you yeah. feel a tiny bit off and do it out in the car park yeah. in your lunch break. Yeah, but look at him go. All of it. All of it, Tori. Imagine just lighting a tiny bit and then the next hell, year, the whole fucking thing's gone. So did the whole warehouse burn to the ground? No, they did put it out in time. There's a photo soon, you'll, you'll see it. Right. But uh, the whole place went... Yeah, it went up pretty quickly. Look at that. Look at Sorry. that. <laughs> oh, my God. There they you go. do look like huge toilet rolls for energy. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> it didn't burn to the ground, but it got burnt. It definitely got fucking burnt. Oh, my God. Oh, I think yeah, well, he, didn't, he didn't die, though, did he? He survived. Did he no, get I away? don't think anyone died. Yeah, I don't think anyone died. No, he can't get a Darwin Award, unfortunately. He's yeah. got to actually kill yourself yeah. doing something stupid. Look how quickly it goes up. One, guess who two, doesn't do job anymore. Three. three seconds. You, oh, you, I guess he's probably going to jail. This this yeah. was in China, so this dude's probably yeah. going to get executed or he's, something. Well, I don't think he'll even end up in a jail. He'll just disappear. They'll just take him to a remote yeah. beach in the middle of the night and you'll never hear about him again. <laughs> Proper nuts. <laughs> Proper nuts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think he was more than his job <laughs> for an EDB. People disappear for stuff like that far out. Especially in China. Yeah, in China, mm -hmm. that's uh, see you later. He's gone on vacation. He won't be returning. <laughs> well, I mean, that's Nuts. competition now. Um, that is a series. Like, Leave it to the end, Tori. Leave it to the end. Follow up to the naked chick zooming into a into yeah. a funeral and shaving over JJ whilst doing it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting. Um, you've come to you've, you've come to the party, Finn. I'm impressed. I was always do, Tori. Always do. Ooh. But as I put in the in the title, it's it's a pretty average week. There's not too much batshit going on this week, apart from now. The wedding, for my the sake and my breaking at this hour of the night, don't mm. put your vote in until I put vote now in the chat because we've got to do the little recap first. Okay, and then below vote now, chuck in. <laughs> Here we go. We kicked off. I vote for. In two years from now, you're going to be able to see the McDonald McDonald's logo on the moon. Yep. That's the latest in inspiration. They've decided the moon's a perfect advertising billboard. So in two years from now, we're going to see logos on a <laughs> bite me, Melma, um, on the moon. Second, we had Biden's 
only employee, Karine Pierre, um, mm. two questions into an interview and she rage quit, gone. I mean, how you can keep defending the guy, I don't know. In California, Lego has said, can you stop using Lego heads in your mugshot photos you keep putting on social media? Thanks. So now they're trying to work out what to do instead. But I thought the Lego ones looked amazing. Um, Baltimore, we had a look at that awful bridge collapse after the ship collided and also looked at one that happened in Tasmania back in 1975. Uh, where's the loo? Yeah, a petty breakup. I'm moving out and I'm taking the loo with me. Then we had um, the Senate committee and the expert that they called in. It was just one great big disaster. Then we had the girl zooming into a funeral, butt naked in the shower, shaving her beaver. And we ended with three seconds to ignite a gigantic pile of styrofoam and uh, a Chinese employee has never been heard of again. So now, vote now for the story you think should win. Finn. What do you got for, Tori? I've just asked you. I reckon the toilet. Not the toilet. I reckon the funeral. I'll go to the funeral. I mean, I'm just going to the funeral. I suppose Zoom's a good way to sum mm. that up. You're going to the funeral. Interesting. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. fire. The fire. Ooh. There we go, Tori. But the uh, the toilet was definitely a close second for me, I reckon. <laughs> the toilet that was pathetic, wasn't mm. it? That Come was on, greeners, you got to vote. Oh, Here we Zoom, go. another one for Zoom. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of thinking Zoom's going to win. Mm. The beaver shaver at the funeral. Yep. It feels um, so disrespectful to do that. It feels so rude. It is. And to take, again, like, yeah. if you're going to take your phone, if you can't go and have a shower and shave your snatch mm. without taking your phone, why would your phone be positioned to yeah. record you? But to make matters worse, you're zooming into a funeral. And yeah. then imagine rocking up to the wake and everyone's like, nice beaver. Thank you. I'll shave yeah. you yeah, thank, thanks for that view. That was great. Yeah, we <laughs> we really need some cheering up at the funeral, so thank you for that. <laughs> Grandma will be so proud. You don't know what to vote for, Joe. I mean, that's okay. You, I, I love that you've returned and you're still very, um, you consider your vote very, you take it very seriously, your vote towards a golden mm. match. But I think Some the, might say too seriously. The funeral, no. Jamin's only just come back, Finn, and now you're going to make him leave. Stop it. Be <laughs> nice. Be nice. Nah, Jamin's um, on the same side. You're all I know, good, Jamin. I imagine if you and I, we, Mel Mel and I had to zoom into a beautiful friend's funeral and the last thing either of us thought about doing was shaving our Fanula regions. Yeah. So bizarre. So disrespectful. Mm. It's a good uh, question, Humanimal. Yeah, what did you think was going to happen at the wake? What was she planning at the wake? Who knows? Well, she may not have been planning anything at the wake, but because she broadcasted, there were probably quite a few guys going, nice beaver, and she'd be like, thank you, I shaved it this morning. <laughs> a lot of people hook up at wakes. Me Is everyone voting? Let's get a vote off. We've got the votes. The Zoom chick has won, like, by a gazillion oh. miles. Damn. I just wanted to fly because I was impressed with what your follow-up story was. It was I pretty wasn't good. Something that was batshit too, though. Yeah, and I knew the rule: you always go the last one. So I had to. Do I that. saved the best for last. <laughs> we both did. There was, was a build up. Beat mine, yeah, really cool to see you groovers too. Like it's been a beautiful little reunion. Have you noticed oh. though? Jamin hasn't. Um, Commented again, Finn, since you're a little dig. <laughs> Jamin, <laughs> prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, Jamin. From the mainland. G'day, Groover. From the mainland. The North oh, Island. Our mainlanders keep coming down here and taking our, <laughs> taking our homes. The island. <laughs> so should we put the beaver woman back up, mm. even though it's a bit hard to... Hang on, let me see if I can if, zoom in. If you can save the image, you can zoom in when you save it to your computer. So All right, give me... That. You, you, will you just entertain the masses like I did while you were? Um... I can do that. I'm, I'll read out the comments from everyone. Cool. So we've got, so we've got uh, Brown Dog. Welcome, Brown Dog. And then uh, some people only do family at the funerals and then awake now. Mm. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He is prob having whiffy issues. 
Oh, Jamin, yeah, yeah, true, true. Brown Dog, Corey, Victoria, lol. That's the random comment. Wow, you worked out her name. Congratulations, Brown Dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that a North Island joke? I don't get it. <laughs> what? So my name's Victoria. Yeah, or is or is Brandog saying they're from Victoria? I don't know. I don't know. Does that count as the North Island, Victoria? Yeah, to stay it <laughs> off. But it's also me name, which I might yeah. start using a bit more. I don't know if there's any any maps viewers in. Um, I can't find where I saved it. It doesn't matter. We saw a snatch. Well, we didn't really. It was blurred out. Mm. You'll have to find the original, Corey, and share it next time. I, yeah, but I just saved it and it's not anywhere to be seen. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. She's disrespectful. Mm. She's had more PR than she deserves. But, yeah, there's a horrible um, girl in the Married at First Sight season called Tori. I'm a big Survivor fan. And Alone Australia, the next season started tonight, Finn. Mm, you know, nice. I told you for months you've got to watch Alone and then one day we were chatting and you're like, I've been watching this show, show called Alone and yeah. it's amazing. It's like, yeah, so the oh, new yeah, Aussie started tonight on SBS, so something to catch up oh. on. Um, but. I started watching the uh, Bear Grylls one where he sends them all to the island. Yep. And uh, he sends all the females to the island and then he sends all the males to the island. Fuck, that was funny. That was some of the funniest TV What's I've ever seen. What's the one called? It's, I think it's called Survival Survival of the Sexes or something like that. Oh, but it's okay. like he, he splits them up so the chicks get an island and the dudes get an island. <laughs> and within the first day, the chicks are arguing with one another because they can't work out who's going to be in charge. And the boys have already got water sorted. They've got the camp sorted. they got a fire sorted. <laughs> There's no one in charge. They're just being fucking reckless. They catch a crocodile the second day and start eating crocodile. The chicks go to find the camp campsite. They get lost halfway through an, a very small island, turn around because they're arguing with one another, go back. Half of them get separated. They have, make it back to where they got dropped off. The second day they go out for the, to find the camp again, they still can't do it. it. takes them three days. They've had no food. The doctor's calling up being like, oi, we can't keep this going. Like, eventually we're going to have to call it for health reasons. And then um, it keeps coming well, back to the men and the men really have just, like, funny. created paradise. Yeah, but they clearly, clearly <laughs> cast like of idiots because a woman won the first series of Australia alone. Mm. The guys yeah, were hopeless. It was, it was she really went out in the middle of the night to do a wee and heard a little native critter next to her and picked up a rock and knocked it on the head and was eating pottery for weeks. <laughs> wow. Um, but, yeah, so Victoria is brown. Harriet Victoria. Mum, mum really liked the name Harriet for me, but my surname started. My, well, no, mum liked the name, but my surname starts with an H as well, and mum didn't like names that had the same mm. initial. Um, yeah. But she wanted her daughter called Harry. But, um, yeah, so Tori's now been completely ruined by this chick on this awful Married at First Sight. So I'm thinking I'm just going to go back to being Victoria. We'll not go back to I've never really been Victoria, but <laughs> she's besmirched my name, Finn. How dare she? How rude. I know. There you go, Joe, man. I've commented it down below. <laughs> what the fuck, Mel Mel? Don't answer that, Tori. I'm not. Ask <laughs> Yeah, what the fuck, Mel Mel? There you go. That was a pretty good episode for a boring week. There was not much that happened this week, Tori. One of the slow ones. Yeah, was big stuff that Maybe happened. humanity's turning around. Maybe humanity's going up on the up. <laughs> Excellent, eh? Hey? Mm. So, this week. Yeah. wednesday -ish? We'll have to see because I'll be at work, so I don't actually yes. know. Let's just touch uh, base and you on. guys just need to um, keep out, you know, keep on checking out. Oh, my yeah. off-the-shoulder action is saucy. <laughs> I do like a wide neck sweater and T-shirt. I can't stand the thing. Mm. Yeah, mine's pretty loose. Look at that. No, it's pretty loose, but you know the t-shirts and stuff. I mean, I don't really wear t-shirts anyway, mm. but the ones that are, oh, jumpers like that. Yeah. Maybe I'll um, wear a turtleneck next week. I love it too. It's so weird because, like, like, a lot of people that don't like the constricted 
restricted mm. neck that you can't handle a turtle neck, turtleneck. But I actually love that in winter. I like being all warm and snug. Mm. I just don't like summer clothing or lighter weight clothing being. Mm. Oh, Natty. You know what, Mel Mel? Never worn a bra. Mercury is in retrograde throughout April, so it'll be great for batching. Okay, so there's going to be a heap of crazy stuff. Hey, one thing if we can work it out, um, one of my best buddies that I got into comedy with in Adelaide and we had a duo called Dangerous Curves, she's coming to stay with me for a few nights in April, so we might try and do batshit when Joe's staying here because she's hilarious. Oh, Bring her on, yeah. That'll be great oh, to have to the show. Buddy. Why not? You'll yeah. have to get her own camera though, so we can have three three people on the screen. Okay. Mm. What's natural, Mel Mel? Oh, she's body saying my body is natural. Your body is can't natural. Say it, but my muscles are massive. I did have a story I didn't include tonight about a guy with a micro penis. Well, thank you very much for not sharing a penis story this week, Dory. The <laughs> Crowd and myself do appreciate it. Oh, there's no way I was going to do a penis story when I found the beaver one. <laughs> uh, all right. So next all week, right. maybe we I'll upload questions. on the channel and we'll see what's going on. But I'll keep this all updated. So just make sure, make sure you're looking out for it. All yeah. right. See you, Tori. Have a Catch beautiful Easter. Easter. Have a great yeah, Easter. Easter, everyone. Yeah. Eat some eggs. Just get. <laughs> Get festive, I guess. Lots of chocolate. Mm. Pop some buns. Check it out, guys. Enjoy. There you go. Nice one for you.